board online board offline today we have part three in our game of thrones instructional series this is going to teach you everything you need to know about combat in game of thrones second edition now part one covered setup part two covered all the gameplay except for combat obviously today we're covering combat and then part four will cover some additional rules that didn't really fit neatly in any of those other spots before we get down to the table i do want to mention our sponsor stonevalleygames.com this is your friendly distant game store it's run by eric and wendy they have a great thing going on over there they've got a loyalty program for returning customers if you are in the military and you're overseas they will ship free if you have an aa ap or ae address so go check them out they've got all kinds of great stuff over there they've got a solo focus over at stonevalleygames.com but they also have tons of other great stuff they have a uh, uh, i mean the new hotness old classics you know everything from family games to heavy strategy games to collectible card games whatever you're looking for they can scratch that itch so go over check out stonevalleygames.com there's a link in the description below and now let's get down to the table and i'm going to teach you how to play game of thrones second edition whenever a player marches one or more of their units into an area containing units from another house combat ensues Combat is resolved by comparing the total combat strength of the battling sides. The victor is the player who gathers the highest combat strength. Footmen each add one combat strength. A knight adds two combat strength. If ships are involved, they add one combat strength. And a siege engine, when attacking a stronghold or a castle, would add four combat strength, but otherwise it would add zero combat strength. The player resolving the march order is the attacker, and their units are attacking while the opponent occupying the contested area is the defender, and their units are defending. Any supporting units are considered supporting, neither attacking nor defending. Combat is resolved in six steps, which can be found on the quick reference sheet, call for support, Calculate initial combat strength, choose and reveal house cards, use Valyrian Steel Blade, calculate final combat strength, and combat resolution, which has four substeps. The first step, as we said, is call for support. Both the attacker and the defender may plead for support from all areas adjacent to the embattled area containing a support order. In this case, let's say Harrenhal had a support order and contained two footmen, and the knight from House Stark. For the rest of this video, by the way, I'm going to lay down the pieces so it's easier for you to see exactly what pieces are where. The player who controls such a supporting area may now choose to grant or refuse to grant support to either side. If the player chooses to support a side, they will support them with their supporting combat strength, which is the combined strength of all their units in the supporting area. In this case, four strength. Support may be given to any adjacent combat, whether the supporting player's own forces are in the combat or, as is the case here, the combat is between two other players. If there were multiple supporting orders adjacent to the embattled area, for instance, another one over here, support must be declared or refused in turn order. If the attacking or defending player has friendly support orders in an adjacent area, they may support themselves in a combat. When a player grants support, their support order token is not removed at the end of this combat. It's actually possible for support order to support any number of adjacent combats in the same game round. Also, if the march had moved in this direction, this support order token would give no defensive bonus to its own area. Both attacking and defending players are allowed to refuse support even if it was offered. Ship units may support not only adjacent combat in sea areas, but also adjacent combat in land areas. However, footmen, knights, and siege engine units may never provide support in combat in a sea area. 
A supporting siege engine will only provide support if supporting an area where combat is occurring with a stronghold or a castle. So supporting this area would be something the siege engine could do. But if the combat was occurring down here, the siege engine could not support. A supporting player must contribute an area's full supporting combat strength if they choose to support. A player may never choose to support their enemy in combat against themselves. It's important to remember that a supporting player must be adjacent to the embattled area, not the originating area that the march came from. Once all support orders adjacent to the embattled area have granted or refused support, proceed to step two, calculate initial combat strength. During step two, both sides will now tally and announce their initial combat strength. This includes combat strength from the following sources. Attacking and defending units. If the defender had applied a defense order, that bonus would be included. A march order bonus if applied. A march order bonus if applicable. In this case, it's plus zero, but it could maybe be plus one, or perhaps it's a penalty with minus one. Supporting units. And any special support order bonuses like this. And a garrison token if applicable. Both players clearly announce their initial combat strength, after which combat proceeds to the third step of choosing and revealing house cards. So in this case, let's say the Lannisters marched on Blackwater and there was one Baratheon footman there and the Starks decided to provide support. In this case... The Lannisters have four combat strength. The Baratheons have one, two here in Blackwater with an additional four in support coming from Harrenhal. So right now it's four combat strength to six. Both attacker and defender secretly choose which house card they're going to play. And then when both players are ready, they reveal them simultaneously and resolve their effects. Playing a house card during combat is mandatory for both attacker and defender. Let's take a look at what you can find on these house cards. At the top here, you'll have the character's name and then their artwork underneath it. The combat strength will be in the top left corner, and this will be added to the player's initial combat strength. The text ability at the bottom of the card may affect combat or some other aspect of the game. It's possible that combat icons will appear instead of text. Each player begins the game with seven different house cards, which represent different leaders within the house and will provide various effects. After house cards are revealed, their text is resolved immediately unless otherwise stated. In the case of both of these, it actually is resolved at the end of combat, so not immediately. There are instances when the exact order of house card resolution will be important. Should a timing conflict occur, follow this order of operations. Any text abilities that include the terms ignore or cancel are first resolved in turn order of the Iron Throne track. Any text abilities that include the term immediately, like this one, are resolved in the turn order of the Iron Throne track. And then all other conflicting abilities are finally resolved in the order of the Iron Throne track. Finally, after the outcome of combat is determined, any text abilities that state if you win or lose this combat are resolved in turn order of the Iron Throne track. When resolving any house cards, the text of the first card must be fully implemented before the second card begins resolution. After combat is resolved, the two played house cards are placed face up in the discard pile of their respective houses. As long as a card remains in the discard pile, it is not available for use in combat. If a player has used their final house card in this combat, they take the other six cards back into their hand, but the most recently used one stays in the discard pile. We mentioned the combat icons that players may find on their house cards. This is one of them, the sword icon. During the combat resolution step, the player who won the combat counts the number of sword icons on their house card. For each sword icon, an enemy in the embattled area must be destroyed. The other icon is the fortification icon. 
For each fortification icon on a house card of the defeated player, one of the victor's swords is ignored. So in this case, Sir Jamie Lannister's sword would be ignored since Brienne of Tarth was played. It should be noted that all of a player's house cards, those in their hand and those in their discard pile, are public knowledge. Any player can inspect all of a player's house cards at any time, with the exception being step three of combat when they are choosing the card they're going to play. The fourth step of combat is to use the Valyrian Steel Blade. If either the attacker or the defender holds the Valyrian Steel Blade, that player now has the option of using its ability to provide plus one to their total combat strength. If used, flip the token to its faded side as a reminder that it cannot be used again this round. Step five is to calculate final combat strength. Both sides will now combine their initial combat strength with any modifiers accumulated through house cards and using the Valyrian Steel Blade token to get their final combat strength. Step six is combat resolution. Combat is concluded by performing the following four sub-steps. First, determine the victor. In this case, let's say that House Stark did not support House Baratheon. First, the player with the highest final combat strength wins the combat and their opponent is defeated. In this case, House Lannister has more combat strength than House Baratheon. If the combat strength had been tied, then the player closer to the one position on the fiefdoms track would win the combat. The second sub-step is to determine casualties. Only the defeated player will take casualties in combat. They are determined by counting the number of sword icons the victor's house card has, minus the number of fortifications. In this case, one minus one is zero, so zero casualties. So the defeated player will take no casualties. The result will be the same if there were more fortifications than swords, still simply zero casualties. However, if a player does suffer casualties, they decide which units will be removed unless otherwise stated by a text ability. Also remember that if there are supporting units, they can never be casualties. So if this had occurred and so one casualty needed to be suffered, House Baratheon might choose the footman as their casualty. It's also important to keep in mind that each unit, regardless of combat strength, counts as only a single casualty which is why it's generally going to be best to remove footman units as casualties if possible. The third sub-step is retreats and routing. After resolving the casualties sub-step, the losing army must retreat from the embattled area. Again, supporting units will never retreat. If it was the attacker who lost the combat, they must retreat back to the area that they marched from. If the defender lost, they must retreat to a friendly area or to an empty area. If there are multiple retreating units, they must retreat all to the same area. Even if the attacking units had left the area they marched from empty, the retreating units may not retreat into that area. If retreating friendly units into an area with more friendly units would cause the player to exceed their supply limit, they cannot do this. If a player's only option is to retreat to an area that would cause them to exceed their supply limit, they must first destroy enough units so that they do not exceed that supply limit. If a player's only option is to retreat to an area that would cause them to exceed their supply limit, they must first destroy enough units so that they do not exceed their supply limit and then retreat. And if there were actually no legal area in which to retreat, then all retreating units are destroyed. As you might have guessed, footmen and as you might have guessed, footmen and knight units may never retreat into the sea and ship units may never retreat onto the land. Now, for the sake of this video, I have all of my units on their sides because of my camera setup. It's, it just worked better for you to see what these units are. However, I'm gonna stand many of them back up and you'll see why momentarily. Okay, now that they're standing back up, let's say these units are the defeated units and they retreat into Crackclaw Point. Units that have retreated are now placed on their side to show that they have been routed. 
Routed units provide no combat strength, but still count towards a player's supply limit. If a routed unit is forced to retreat, it is instead destroyed. So if somehow this unit was attacked, maybe there was a pending attack order up here in the Mountains of the Moon, then if they had to retreat again, they would be destroyed. Routed units may never be chosen as casualties in combat, and they may not move even if a March order token is resolved in their area. Also, if available, a player is allowed to use ship transport to retreat their units. Also, siege engines cannot retreat, and if they would need to, they are destroyed instead. After combat is completed, remove the attacking player's march order from the board. If the combat was won by the attacker, remove any order token the defender had assigned to the embattled area, as well as any power tokens that might be in the area. On the other hand, if the defender had won, their order token and any power tokens would remain. Finally, both played house cards are discarded to their respective players' discard piles and the resolve march order step of the action phase now continues. And that is the end of part three of our instructional series on a Game of Thrones the board game second edition. Be sure to come back for our final part where we're gonna cover some additional rules that didn't quite fit into any of the other three parts. And then you will have everything you need to know to play a Game of Thrones. Be sure also to keep a look out for upcoming videos for things like Keystone North America, uh, Nemo's War, Lands of Galzer, Waste Nights, lots of great stuff coming up. And until next time for Board Online, Board Offline. Thank you.